in Chan. We have with us Mr. Hawass, from, former Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Antiquities. Um, sir, thank you for taking the time to speak with us. Um, what is your uh, version of what is happening in Egypt uh, right now? You know, what's happening in Egypt right now, it's... Uh, what's good about it, this is the first time since 5,000 years that the Egyptians are going to have democracy. The, Egypt, the Egyptians were ruled for 5,000 years by one man, all the time. Therefore, for them to have democracy, we are still learning. Then what's happening now, it's kind of, uh, of things happening in, uh, in the streets of Cairo, and people are looking for more democracy, and this why, and when the Muslim brothers took over, uh, we found out, all of us, that they are ruling for one group. They are not ruling all the Egyptians. And therefore, in June 30th, uh, 33 millions went in the streets of Egypt asking for a change. And, they, and therefore, this changes. People outside of Egypt think it's a coup. And actually, it is not a coup. In January 25th, 5 million uh, dismissed an elected president. And uh, the army took over for more than one year. In June 30th, 33 million dismissed an elected president, but the army did not take over. And they choose uh, a civilian who is the head of the Supreme Court, and they have a, a, a road map. In 10 days, the constitution, constitution will be finished. And after that, the election of the parliament, and after that, the president. I'm going to tell you, because based on what really I see in the history, uh, 4,200 years ago, a revolution like this happened. It continued for 150 years. How Egypt was saved? After 150 years, a military, a strong military guy came, united upper and lower Egypt. Yeah. We need a strong leader to make the law and to, 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 to tell the people that demonstration, it doesn't mean democracy means you have to, have to demonstrate all the time. You have to stay without work for three years. No, people have to understand that we need to build our country and we need all of us to work. And this is really what the young people has to, to learn. Uh, and we are hoping that after the constitution will be finished, that in the parliament, then people can understand they have to go and work and Egypt will go to normal again. You kind of been, Egypt has been the catalyst for the Arab Spring phenomenon, as you know. Um, do you think Egypt is Arab Spring gone wrong? You know, Egypt is different. Because if you, uh, if you look at the Egyptians and speak Arabic, the majority are Muslims. But they, they are different from the Arabs. They are different from the Africans. We Egyptians are unique with their personalities, with their characters. And therefore, I really think that Egypt, based on someone like me who, who learned history, that without Egypt, the Arabs will never uh, be united. Egypt is a place that the Arabs gives hopes to all the Arabs because it can save them from many things. And this is why all the Arabs are waiting until Egypt will go in the good step now. Yeah, uh, Egypt is the barometer for pretty much the Middle East and the surrounding areas. Yes. What is happening here is very important because a lot of it affects the perception from the outside world. So if there's uh, instability here, people will perceive the whole region to be unstable. It's, if there is no stability in Egypt, means a chaos in the whole Arab world. And that's why we hope that the uh, Egypt will go to the best way now. What about travel and tourism now for Egypt? I mean, you know, I, I have to tell you, uh, I used to say before, uh, people were asking me, can we go to Egypt now? I said, wait. But now I'm traveling after tomorrow, tomorrow actually night, to go to 10 cities in Europe on behalf of the Ministry of Tourism, to tell the people that they should come. Because since the revolution happened, 
there is no one single accident happened to any tourist. If you go to the sites, secure, hotels are secure. The only thing that happened in Egypt in two or three squares. Right. And, and this is why if, if anyone comes to Egypt, I think, and I can see, uh, he can feel safe. And it's very important for all the people to come back to visit because without tourists, the monuments will be deteriorating. I saw that and... It I is, because the tourist gives money from tickets to, uh, to an antiquities organization. And what happened after the revolution for antiquities needs to be repaired. You know, be illegal excavations happening everywhere. People are looking for gold and looking for something called the Red Mercury. And the Red Mercury, it's a legend, doesn't exist, but people think in the throat of the mummy they can have this liquid. Right. If they have it, you know, it's just ignorance. And, the, and because of this ignorance, people began to attack sites, to build tombs, to build, uh, to change land to agriculture, and even go in a museum like uh, Malau Museum in Middle Egypt. They smashed 1,050 objects from that museum, and one statue that's missing is the sister, the daughter of uh, Eknaton, uh, Merit Atun, was a statue made of red granite, was stolen from that museum. Then what really happened in antiquities in Egypt? needs to be repaired. We are building, I built the Grand Museum. I'm building it now. I, I, I spent $125 million in, uh, in, uh, in building this museum. We need $700 million to finish this museum. I was working in 24 museums. Then all of this cannot happen without the help of the tourist. Right. We need the people to come back. So and, you're, are you saying there's rampant looting at the moment? There was some looting in many sites. They do illegal excavations in the evening underneath their houses. Modern Egypt is built above ancient Egypt. Right. Then underneath every house and everywhere in Cairo, if you dig, you'll find antiquities. What was that thing that they were looking for? Red? It's called, it's a legend, doesn't right, it? Exist? Right, it's called right. the Red Mercury. And this Red Mercury, it doesn't exist. <laughs> it's something... Uh, was created this name when the Soviet Union was finished and they had something with uh, the uranium. And, but people in Egypt created this word and they think it's a liquid in the throat of the mummy. If you get it, you can cure uh, sick people and you can control the devils. It's a legend among the people. And even some intellectuals, when I walk in the street, they ask me about the Red Mercury. People began to create stories about this. Right, right. You know, it's it became like a, a, a nightmare of what the people think about antiquities after the revolution. It's kind of like a holy grail. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> um, you were the Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Antiquities, and then you were the Minister of Antiquities. Uh, what do you make of that experience? You know, I think for these 10 years, uh, I really began to plan six important things. The first one was building 24 museums. If you saw Luxor Museum, this is what I did. The Crocodile Museum, and right. uh, I did it. Uh, building the Grand Museum now, I, that after I left, nothing happened. The Civilization Museum, the Sharm el Sheikh Museum. The Grand Museum is different from the Egyptian Museum. No, no, the Grand Museum is the largest museum in the world by the pyramids. Oh, okay. And we are re reconstructing it now. And I did site management program to preserve antiquities for Pharaonic, Coptic, Islamic, and Jewish uh, monuments in Egypt. And you can see many changes happen, like in the Valley of the Kings, like look at the, the, design, the, 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 the work that happened in every site to protect the sites. And number three, uh, I was protecting, the, uh, changing the Egyptian law to make any theft of antiquities to be severe, uh, and also uh, recording the Egyptian monuments for the first time. And number four, I created a program to train the Egyptians and to make the Egyptians to love their antiquities. And number five, I returned 5,000 artifacts from all over the world. And number six, I trained 1,000 young people who are really my legend, that those 1,000 people, one day they could make antiquities to be in the top because you know the, the people who are in charge of antiquities now are not trained to be good mm. to do something mm. but the younger people if you let them like I did with them I made major important discoveries that captured the hearts of people all over the world 
Now they're not working. They're not doing anything. And that's sad. 